I'm Dan Weike, the NBA writer at the LA Times, joined by Matt Brennan, the TV editor, and Brad Turner. Um, what, Brad, what, what Lakers, Clippers, slash Michael Jordan, ball boy, like you, you were around for all of this stuff. Man, hey, look, I was so happy to hear them say that they were in Paris. I mean, I, I was excited. I thought, wow, you don't they were in my city a couple of times. You're not going to F your summer up, just like hey, Scotty. Right. I was done after that. Why watch anything else? Bad E. Um, I think, Matt, we should start with you, um, just because this is your sort of, the, the, the medium is, is your area of expertise, following along on social and stuff like this. Um, you wrote a great story about Jordan monoculture already. Did, did this kind of get the reaction you thought it might, um, kind of following along? I know in Brad and I, in our circles, like, it was everything. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I was I was gratified. I rarely get to crow about being right, uh, but I was gratified to see that it felt like it was the thing that people were talking about on Sunday night. Certainly on Twitter, which is sort of my main area that I'm paying attention to, um, and I think that's because of what I wrote in my piece, which is that Jordan and the Bulls of the '90s transcend basketball and even sports you do not have to be a diehard fan of chicago of the nba of basketball in general to really dig this docuseries and i say that thinking that i actually think that the first episode which is sort of the big overview might be the least interesting of the whole series because it sort of just gets the cards on the table Once they start to dig into like the stuff about Scottie Pippen and like waiting on surgery because he's pissed about like not about not being paid enough. I don't, I didn't know any of that before I saw this. And I found that fascinating. Like the palace intrigue aspect of it is, is interesting to me, even like, you know, without being a basketball guy. Yeah. I mean, BT, you've lived that with Shaq. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I thought when Shaq says, I got hurt on company time, I'm going to take care of my surgery on company time. And that was Scotty, so maybe Shaq stole it from Scotty. I don't yeah. know. I have to call him and ask him. The- what, did you guys, what did you guys think about it? From I, What I'm curious about is, for folks who follow basketball closely, was there anything that you've seen so far that you were surprised by or didn't expect or learned that you didn't know before? No. What it took me back to, as I told Dan before we came on, I covered the Dodgers in 1994, and a friend of mine, a guy named Steve Dilbeck, says, let's leave leave Vero Beach, and let's go watch Michael Jordan play baseball. I started thinking, wow, I saw him play baseball. I don't know how much he played, three or four innings. I don't recall much about the baseball game. I just remember driving from Vero Beach against the Sarasota, Florida, to watch Michael play baseball for a couple of innings. And when he did his interviews, it was all about basketball. That's all I could think. We're asking him about the Bulls, if he's going to go back. Does he miss playing basketball? That's all I kept thinking about. Man, we're watching this incredible star, athlete, superstar play a game of baseball. We don't care about whether he strikes out. We don't care whether he can hit a ball or not, whether he can catch a ball or not. We only care about him going back to the Bulls. And throughout this, I kept thinking about that. Man, I saw something then that I didn't take it much as being anything at all. I mean, just watching Michael play baseball. I think to me, Matt, the the two things that really stood out, I I didn't know a lot of stuff about Scotty's background in terms of, obviously I knew Central Arkansas and I knew – the growth spurt and all of that stuff. I didn't know the one of 12 kids. I didn't know about his father and his brother, both being in wheelchairs. I never had tied those two things with why he would then take, you know, what turned out to be such a horrible contract, um, which is, I think, certainly one of the things I'm seeing a lot of people talk about on Twitter is how little Scottie Pippen made. Um, you know, I mean, like let thirty, like over $30 million less than Michael Jordan. <laughs> That last season, which is a, a, an insane number. And then I think the other thing, too, and, and I feel slightly bad because he's no longer with us, 
but man, do those guys kill Jerry Krause. And, <laughs> yes. and, and it is like, I mean, it's bullying, it's petty, um, it's vicious. Uh, they kill him about his height. They kill him about being fat. Um, they go after that guy. And, I mean, Matt, you and I have seen it. Like, we're just getting started <laughs> on that front. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you think about it in terms of a kind of a, you know, a TV narrative, you do need a villain of sorts. Mm -hmm. And Jerry Krause is in a lot of ways an easy villain because he, because of all the reasons why they pick on him. I will say that if I, and I I wrote this in my piece, if I had one qualm about the docuseries as a whole, I think that, and this may be a factor of, of him having passed in 2017, and he's not able to kind of offer his current side of the story, but he comes off as being probably the most simplistic of the figures who are sort of main figures in this narrative. Jordan, his interview has so much more depth than I've ever seen him give in interviews before. Chef's um, kiss. Mm-hmm. So Body good. is always an interesting figure as like the sidekick. Um, I, I won't spoil it for people, but like the Rodman episode next week okay. is killer. <laughs> um, Phil Jackson being this like sort of like weirdo sage is interesting. Jerry yeah. Krause is the one who doesn't get a lot of depth. And I don't have any skin in the game on the Jerry Krause, you know, bandwagon or not on the bandwagon. But I do think that it would have been nice if they had given him a couple extra layers. Cause I think you can kind of see why he felt slighted. And it wasn't just the personal insults. He and sort of the Bulls organization made some smart choices that you see in the first couple episodes started to transform Jordan from a star player into, into the Bulls being a championship team. And to a winner. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And I and think gets, should get some credit for that. Right. And, I mean, ultimately, right. Like he does, he's in the hall of fame. Um, you know, like that matters. It's funny. Two things on Krause real quick. I'll throw it to BT. Uh, one, I, you know, in talking to some people who have played on these teams over the past few weeks, it's still to me, like kind of amazing that people don't say a lot of really nice things about Jerry Krause. <laughs> and, and, and then two, I think there are awesome. There's so many awesome sound bites in these first two episodes. Uh, the effing headache, the traveling cocaine circus, the Larry Bird talking about you know Jordan. That's not the first time he said it, but just seeing him say it is so is so great. Um, Scotty not wanting to f up his summer like BT this summer, um, like all of these things that were were great to me. I think my favorite quote was about Kraus, and it's when Ryan Sorf says Jerry Kraus like had a problem loving people who didn't love him back which is like the saddest thing I've ever heard that you can say about somebody. And and you could kind of see it. Like it was a club that he wanted to be in and he could never be in that club and they would never let him in. You know, and they, they didn't to this day. I don't think they have. Correct. I got to cover Phil Jackson when he was coach of the Lakers. And every now and then we'd ask him about Jerry Krause and I can't recall him saying anything overly nice about the man. I mean, he tried to maybe clean some things up, but he just wasn't feeling Jerry Cross. They don't feel Jerry Cross. I think my first tweet was, one of the first ones, man, they're killing Jerry Cross from the very beginning. <laughs> Yeah. It was the Jerry Krause is the is the one figure that I wasn't aware of coming into the series. And so they do make a very striking point about him. Yeah, we're going to write about him, or I'm going to write about him this week as kind of a nice, like, I think, explainer to people about who he was, what he did. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. You, it's, you see some of these bad decisions that happen along the way and, like, these little things that happen in management that allow the story to unfold the way it does. The fact that they're able to trade up to get Scotty Pippen, Scott Pippen at that time, for yes. vir- virtually nothing. Like, it, like they didn't give up anything of, of real – I, you know, that pick ends up turning out to be Olden Polynes, nice NBA player, like not a Hall of Famer. Um, the, the little tiny thing, and I looked this up, I never knew this before. So Portland obviously famously drafts Sam, Sam Bowie second. Sam Bowie breaks his legs. 
um, a bunch of times as an NBA player. It's a really tragic kind of career. Never was Jordan anyways, and then had all these injury problems. Um, that pick was traded to the Portland for Indiana from Indiana. And I looked it up. It's just some dude named Tom Davis, some like veteran guy, like a total throwaway trade. And it's like Indiana would have taken Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan ends up torturing Indiana for the better part of a decade, you know, and they got one season and like 11 points a game out of Tom Davis. Um, just like, you know, so you're right. Jerry Krause deserves a lot of credit. He didn't, well, he didn't draft Jordan. That was Rod Thorne, but like, you know, Rod Thorne wanted Jordan to be taller. Like, I love that scene too. I, I don't know guys. I, I've seen this now a bunch of times and I'll watch it a bunch more. But didn't Jerry Krause trade Oakley? Yep. Phoenix? That was a smart move. When he also got Scotty, when was Horace Grant traded or drafted by them? Grant is the Pippen draft. It's the same draft. Um, and yeah. then Who Horace that eventually. Um, I think that was just their pick. Just their pick. But he had a great pick. three NBA championships. The first three, Horace Grant was a part of that. So the man was good and smart. He just needed to be loved there. Don't we all want to be loved? <laughs> he <laughs> traded for Rodman, right? I mean, he traded for Rodman at a time when Rodman was totally Antonio. toxic. Yeah. I love, I mean, I love those little moments. Um, I'm a sucker for good archival footage. So, like, that moment where Pippen gets drafted, is it by Seattle? And then, yeah. like, while he's, like, giving an interview in Seattle, gear head to toe, the reporter says to him, hey, did you hear you're going to the Bulls? And he's like, I guess I'm going to the Bulls. And I, <laughs> you know, stuff like that is, uh, you forget about it because it's on kind of a constant, I think we're so used to a, a world in which that sort of stuff is on a constant loop on ESPN or cable news or now the internet. And getting just the, like, the key snippet of it, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe they got that live. That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, and then the game footage too. Like one of my one of my first stories that I was telling people about this is I grew up in the Boston area. So when I uh, when they show Jordan scoring sixty three against the Celtics, I immediately texted my dad and I was like, "You are gonna go wild for this docu series because you're gonna remember all of these key games." Yeah. Uh, and he did. He like knew off the top of his head how many points he had scored. You know, thirty years ago. I think uh, before we go here, guys, um, first of all, thank you guys for joining us. This is fun. We're going to do it again. We're going to keep doing this, hopefully, for the next four weeks. Hopefully, they can find another 20 hours of footage and keep us busy for the 10 weeks after it ends. Um, I think two things we should do real, real quick before we go is sort of um, who your sort of MVP of the episode was and maybe your favorite moment. Um, and BT, let's start with you. My MVP? Man, that's a good one, man. I'm going to say it was, um, I'm going to go ahead and say Scott Burrell. Small moment because they win this game in Paris, my yep. favorite city, of course. And it's like, are we going to take that trophy back home with us? And MJ's like, man, please. <laughs> I mean, he used some words that I can't use, but really, we're <laughs> going to take this back. Okay, Scotty, Burrell, sure, right. man. You won your first championship. That was a funny moment for me, only not just because it was in Paris, but because Scott Burrell had not won a title before. Doesn't and count. Here's <laughs> the trophy. Uh, uh, Matt, what about you? Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit and name the camera crew that followed around the 97-98 Bulls mm -hmm. as my MVP of this episode. Uh, we had a great story on it uh, that will be in Monday's LA Times by Greg Braxton about that gives all of the all of the great details about why this footage has been in the vault for 20 years. But I just give credit to um, those guys for you know lugging around a, a camera and a boom mic for an entire NBA season. And uh, you know you could make a docu series about Jordan's career soup to nuts, and in this atmosphere, I think people would watch it. But having that never before seen, very like intimate and candid footage of the 97, 98 Bulls as the backbone of this gives it, brings it to, to an, another level. I think I, I'll cheat a little bit too. I, I think to me, obviously, the MVP is Michael Jordan. Um, this, it, and what it is, is uh, he's always the MVP. And I think, and I wrote this, the archival footage is awesome. 
But for someone like me, a Chicagoan, proudly wearing Michael Jordan's other team that he eventually plays for, uh, you know, watching this and hearing him speak in a way that you've never, or I've never really heard Michael speak before, talking about things like racism, cursing like that, like, right? Like, he didn't curse when he was trying to sell me Hanes, you know what I mean, or his horrible cologne. Like, he didn't curse in any of that stuff ever. Hearing him just F-bomb people, I love that. Um, I think it speaks to his candor. And then, just from a real quick, from a basketball standpoint, watching the the early footage of Michael and Scotty and then seeing just how different they look than everybody else. Like, I, I tweeted at one point that it looks like Scotty Pippen is like the NBA in 2020 sent back in time to go play against NAI dudes in Arkansas in the mid-1980s. Like, it, it's incredible how fast and skilled he looks. And, and seeing that juxtaposition, I think, in an era where we love to, like, compare and be like, is this team better than that team or is this player better than that player? To me, watching those guys, like uh, uh, that's the best team Larry Bird ever played on and all they wanted to do was stop Michael Jordan. He scored 112 points in two games <laughs> against them. Great with, defense, Celtics. With like, we tweeted out the box score with like nobody on that team. Um, so to, to me, I, that's, that was the stuff I really loved. Also, real quick, guys. Loved watching Dolores Jordan read that letter from Michael. Yes. College was yes. A, um, such a sweet moment. And yeah. uh, I, I like that the documentary got us that. So anyways, we've got stories on latimes.com in the paper and the entertainment section and sports. We're going to keep doing this as long as people keep liking it. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. Enjoy your Sunday night. Tear the warm ups off and uh, let's, uh, you know what I mean? And, and use all that <laughs> bulls energy and uh, go get after the rest of your evenings. Well, drink some wine now, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a good night.